All right, let's hop into it. So, man, like I was just saying, like, I'm I'm amazed by you, for real. Like, I really, really think you're, like, out of here already. And I can't wait for the next, like, five years to come because I feel like I'm going to look back and be like, I was talking to Jalen Josie. That's crazy. That's how <laughs> I feel, you know? Um, yeah. But, you know, just tell me about this, this Ari tour. Like, um, how's it been? Like, the, the love you've been receiving, I'm like, I can't even imagine how you feel because I'm like, yo, this is, you know, it's like you're blowing up before my eyes. So, like, how do you feel? Have it has it opened any doors? Like, tell me about it. By the grace of God, um, yeah. So the tour has been, um, a big learning lesson, a big stepping stone for me. I'm learning how to like keep my head on straight, and I'm learning how to like not let outside influences or like things that are actually happening in my life prior like affect the show. Like, I'm I'm learning how to like switch on to be a I know this is going to be cliche but like I'm, I'm I'm learning how to like you know switch to be like the star in front of people mm. and then go backstage and cry and do all my like stuff like that <laughs> but um no I'm learning how to like be an adult finally I mean like I was I've been adult I'm 24 so I've been adult for 24 years well nah. <laughs> yeah dang <laughs> But um, <laughs> I've been an adult for a while, but like this is like taught me like time management. Well, I've always I've always like known that I'm you know you're supposed to be on time, but like it's more imperative now because you know your face is involved and it's like you don't want nobody to think that you're late. So basically, I've learned how to just like be an adult or more so of an adult and like put the adult things that adults do into like into motion into action um like i'm i'm like this tour has like really showed me that like i'm i'm not a kid anymore and and you know and it's a blessing because it's like i'm moving into it i feel like i'm just moving into a different phase of my life and um i'm like i'm really emotional today but like i feel like and today's the last day so it's like it's like it's I don't know. It's just like this is a, a a a big round of applause for myself, like an internal like congratulations. Like I I did something. I, I pushed through to the end, and you know that's what big girls do. Like you push through, and you know no matter you know any type of circumstance or like anything that happens, or you know I've had I've been having boy troubles this this whole tour. I've been having like I've been having um. Well, I, I usually have my dog with me. I don't have my dog, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm trying to communicate with my family. Last year, my grandfather passed away. So I'm trying to keep in touch with my grandma and make sure she's good. It's just, it's just wild. It's like, um... no, I get, I get you. You know, it's like, I'm 24 too. So I feel exactly what you're going through adult wise. But yeah. on top of it, like the tour and all that. You know, uh, props to you, because I'm sure it is hard. And you know, it's a blessing, of course, but I'm sure it's hard to take it all in, you know? But, yeah, you know, just congrats on the tour. Like I said, Thanks. last day, you know, I'm amazed to see the IG stories. I could have saw it live. We noticed. <laughs> I'll take that, the Instagram stories for now. Um, but, yeah, let's just let's hop into your background a little bit. Um, you know, tell me what inspires you. I actually saw your interview with Terrell. And I, you know, I, I took a little information from there, but I definitely see these jazz influences, and I love that because I'm I love jazz. R and B is my heart, but you know, like Nat King Cole, Billie Holiday, like that stuff, like also is a part of me. So I yeah. think that's why I personally like love your stuff. But just tell me a little bit of the influences that you know got you started wanting to make music, like artists, albums, whatever you feel. First and foremost, my mom is from Detroit, so they didn't have segregated radio so like everything that she cleaned our house to was like Louis Armstrong, Jazz, Cab Calloway, um, Ella Fitzgerald, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Nicks, mm -hmm. um, Billy, Billy Joel, Elton John, like it was just an array of sounds that was in my house. It was either, it, it was either R&B, she was either listening to like we was we could either be listening to Christmas music one day hmm. or R and B the next and it would be in the middle of June and um 
I, I was very blessed that my mom had like a very expansive musical vocabulary because now that's how I feel. Like I feel, I can say that I have a, a, a very diverse musical, you know, musical vocabulary. And, um, and uh, all of those songs really like pushed me towards orchestral music. And uh, I went to Tri-Cities High School and Tri-Cities High School and in music theater, there's a thing called the pit and that's where the orchestra sits. Mm -hmm. And I would do my due diligence to go down there any point in time just to listen to them play. Mm -hmm. And when I ended up going on Broadway um, and the time during the show, like when I wasn't on stage or like it, it, usually the second act, I had less parts to ha you know go on stage and I really was on stage like at the end or maybe in the beginning, in that middle part, while other scenes are going on, I would be in the pit. And I would just be listening to them play in the pit. And I would just remember that, like, dang, them folks can play. And I gained so much of a respect for instrumentalists and people who can actually play instruments. And I play an instrument myself, like I can sing. Um, and, you know, the voice is a, a crazy instrument as well. I can dabble on the piano, but like nothing like these crazy guys and girls that I encounter who can like play the cello and horns, and, you know. I also have a huge respect for producers as well, because like when I, I, I write and I produce my music, but I only produce it to a point where it's like, OK, yeah, another producer can take this and actually take it to the to the level that it needs to be. And so it's someone having like a musical ear to like take some idea that was in their head and like transform it to something else like I have huge total respect for them and so getting back to like my influences my influences like Ella Fitzgerald like oh I remember going on YouTube and like just playing you know videos of like the violin and like the cello and like because I was afraid that I was going to imitate somebody and sound just like them that I would just listen to them the 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 instruments and yeah. I would like I would be like, okay, let me let me mimic that run that the the cello does or the, that the horn does, and like, I I feel like, I feel like that also was like a part of my training, even though I'm musically trained. Um, I feel like that was also a part of my training, and that is what cultivated my sound. So it, it like it, it's an array of things that like came together to like mesh well with me and create me. And um, my mom, <laughs> my mom, excuse me, um her background, uh, me and music theater, the pit, the orchestra pit, um, and and just going on YouTube and like playing instruments back and back to back to back to back, watching people do their covers of like songs and then mimicking what they do with their instruments. There's a few things that you touched on in there that I was gonna bring up, but you know, something that stuck out to me is really how unique you are in your sound. And it's funny that you mentioned that, uh, li like listening to the instrumentals and stuff, because I just can't, like usually I'm able to be like, oh, she kind of has like this brandy vibe, whatever, this person has this. But like, you're so unique and it's like amazing. Like Thank it's you. one of the most original things I've heard in a while. I've been listening to a lot of stuff. Like, I, I, <laughs> you know, so yeah, like props to you on that. And just to bring it back to, um, you know, the, the, the orchestral stuff, I see that in your music too. And we're going to talk about the production later because illustrations, that whole EP, the production is just insane. So we got to jump into like your part and your part in that. But, um, you know, take me to this time on Broadway. I was talking to Haley Kilgore like, on Friday and we brought you up because I, I think you guys have this similar like feel and background in music. And you both are these vocalists that's like they blow me away, you know. So she actually was curious to you what your answer was going to be uh, to this question, too. So just tell me, like, what did you learn from Broadway? Like, what did you take from that to your music and to the stage, uh, even more specifically to this tour, you know, if anything? Um, the the biggest thing that I would say is that if if you can't perform your music, then it's, you, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a wrap. The way that you the way that you captivate people with your lyrics that they probably haven't heard before and like how you reel people in like you know with how you walk across stage or how you connect with somebody like with your eyes in the audience like if 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 you're missing that that one thing it's hard for people to like you want the reason why we go to performances and this is like 
this is my opinion. The reason why I would go to a performance is to experience something, to feel something different, to leave changed. And you want somebody to feel healed and you want somebody to leave changed. And I always say like, if it, one person in the audience has changed, then, yeah. then yeah. that's, that's it. That's the job is done. And I, I learned from Broadway that one, it's different being an ensemble than carrying the show. So now I'm carrying my own set. So I'm doing it myself. And that's a whole difference than relying on other people and other bodies on stage to push the show with you. And, you know, being by yourself, you have to make sure that at least 12 of the people in the front are captivated, you know what I mean? And, um, and I feel like the performance aspect of Broadway is, was such a great teacher for me that I learned that the show and how you perform your music is one of the most important things. How you connect with people beyond just have them having their headphones on or is, is, is like the next level. Like that's the next step is like, if you can connect with people through the headphones, great. If you can connect with somebody in person and live and in front of them, even freaking better. And I believe that, I believe that Broadway was such a great teacher to me for that. And I wonder what her answer was. I mean, it's pretty similar. She talked about uh, having stage presence and reaching the audience as well. And she kind of, I think she says she got like her vocal ability from that. And we're going to jump into your vocal ability. She, she got it from Broadway and the gospel choir, she said. So why don't you tell me a little bit about like where you got yours from? Because I have, I was telling her, I have these favorite female vocalists right now. It's you. It's her, uh, Joyce Rice. Mm. Um, I'll probably put Flo in there now, like that group, the the girl group. They're pretty good. Yeah. And Jayla Darden's good. So it's like, it's, I have like a handful, you know? Yeah. But like you girls are like, you know. So just tell me like, where'd you get that vocal ability from? Um, like I'm sure well, I know you're born with it, but like, where did you go to like somewhere and kind of, you know, grow it there? It's crazy because I don't think anybody in my family can sing. Like my mom, well, every time Christmas comes around, we'll play the Drifters' White Christmas, and she'll hit the like do 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 do. do. And we'll make fun of each other. <laughs> um, but everybody in my family, they're creative, like artists. Like my mom's a graphic designer. Um, my grandmother can look at something and just like paint it. Um, so I got like the vocal ability of the art and um I, I I was just a loud kid and I was just really loud um so I I, I guess God was like all right she's you know if she's gonna be loud let's just let's put a flavor in it too but um I, I guess my voice came from well I also know that my mom said that there was a family member um who could actually sing way way back but it hasn't been anybody else besides me her name is Melissa and she was one of my cousins she was my grandmother's cousin I believe and I just remember I remember her when I was younger and then she passed away um but but yeah I don't, I, I I was in the guy I was in the choir like for once like once and and then I had stage fright for a little bit so I it just didn't work out for me like singing in the church but I was always in the church you know, I was listening to the choirs, but like mine kind of came from the fact that I believe my my mom worked at So So Deaf as well. So oh, wow. I think my voice came from the fact that when she was pregnant and she was like at these album listening parties, <laughs> that she would be standing beside the speaker and that the music was like she could feel it in her belly. So that's where I think mine came from. Like I could say yes to church all day, and I was my voice is definitely influenced by it. I'm black at the end of the day, so it's like. Yes, that is definitely a part. But I think it's the fact that like she was standing beside the speaker and she was pregnant and the music was definitely she was feeling it in her her tummy while she was pregnant. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm with you on that. That makes sense too. And it's pretty amazing that you actually got the opportunity to work with JD and B Cox. Then that's like full circle for sure, you know? Oh, full circle. But uh i B- oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You, no. I'll go. Um Let's talk about like another one of your abilities, and that's your pen. This is kind of a perfect segue into, you know, the writing for Ari. So my favorite song that you penned for her is definitely Gummy. I just think it's, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a good song. It's a good song. Obviously, Thank you. 
and uh, stop by. But, you know, just tell me how that happened. Like, especially like, well, I don't know if the so de- the so so deaf like with your mom had anything to do with it, but just tell me like, how'd you get that position with uh, writing for Ari basically? So it's crazy because honestly, my mom, even though it was, it's it's a great like, when I met um, JD and Peacox, it was great. Like, oh yeah, my mom worked with y'all on the ground up, and they was like, oh that's your mama. Oh my gosh, your mom. It was it was great, but that's not. I I I, I wish, and my mama wishes too. But, but um, no, I had I signed to Sony as a writer. <laughs> Signed to Sony as a writer, and uh, I, I guess the way that pressure happened was, um, I, I guess she just picked a handful of writers and then picked the ones that she. That's the story I heard. Um, they chose me to go in. I wrote "Stop By" the first time we met, and the first time we met, um, um, it was with uh, Jay White, the producer, and. Um, just wrote stop by in that in that time frame and then we wrote another song that i don't i think is i don't even know what that song is but we wrote another song um and and stopped by and and then i think weeks later or months later she called me at like 4 a.m and was like hey um no no she yeah she did it was either she called or she texted and it was like 4 a.m. And she was like, do you think you could come through? And me and Taryn, we hop in the car and we zoom down to whatever studio Jermaine Dupri and Beacox is that. And they was playing pressure on the turntables. And then that happened. Pressure happened. And so we wrote pressure. And then um, after that, I was just so happy to be in L.A. And then Elite and Ari had asked me to come to the studio and we wrote Gummy. So stop by happened. The stop by was the first song that I wrote with Ari. Pressure was the second one, and Gummy happened shortly after. And then, um, no settling happened at my house. I just sent a demo over. Uh-huh. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, it it happened because I was signed to Sony. I wish, um, I really do wish that it, I could. Be like, yeah, my mama had a hand down, you know, blah, 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 blah. I wish I could pull the nepotism card, but I am not a nep- <laughs> a nepo baby. And um, uh, I, 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 it's just it's just a nice fun fact at the end of the day. But no, that's that's how that happened. I hope I answered the question. No, you um, did. We were getting into about like my and whatnot. So what? It went out a little bit. Sorry, we were getting into like like writing so I, I hope i i hope i did like a world round view of how you know the songs started no no you, you definitely did I, I think it's pretty uh i just think it's crazy how um like basically tell me what you learned from b cox and and jd you know like just to be in that position must be that must be amazing and also yeah like, tell me um was that what like got you to be in the tour with ari like was it the writing or were you guys you know it's kind of two questions. I can ask them separately, but, you know. Okay, that's a great question. So first, I learned from uh, JD and Beacox, you know, to, con- like, to, like, regardless, like, the talent is going to shine through, like, and it kind of doesn't matter how, like, long you've been in the game. Like, you can see with how long they've, you know, they've been in the game that, like, it, you know, talent supersedes age talent supersedes time because hmm. they were on they was just it was going at it they were turntables i was like yeah. yeah lost it and um i um the second the second question was was what <laughs> how like what was that no you're good <laughs> was that basically what what got you that call to be in the the Ari tour you know i mean i think it helped hmm. i want to say it helped um yeah. We really, I really don't know. Like, um, I'm signed to CAA, which is one of the the biggest um touring agencies, and um, and and I, they definitely had a had a had a hand in it. But I, I would definitely say that, like, you know, it was more so of a boost. Like, if they came to Ari and was like, "Do you want this girl?" Like, it's Jalen. It's like, I'm sure. Yeah. 
and like I have a really nice relationship with her. She's so sweet to me. She's like a big sister to me. So I wouldn't doubt it for a moment that she she heard and she was like, oh yeah, that's my nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. That's awesome. Um, let, let's hop into your music in, in particular. Um, the EP illustrations. Man, and I heard this a long time ago. This well, when it first came out. And I listened to it this morning again, just to get a little fresh ear. I gotta tell you, just like it's a type of EP you have to listen to straight through. Like someone who appreciates music, like I love the transitions. I just love everything that just went into it. So, you know, I always ask every artist I talk to, like, was there some albums, artists you were listening to when you made it? And, you know, just tell me some. No, I wrote it on Broadway. So my ears, but musicals, musicals, musicals. Um, I was I was still on Broadway when I wrote the wrote and like did the demos to illustration so like the only type of music I was listening to is the show music that I was you know that I was currently doing while being on Broadway and musicals like I had a whole playlist that I would just run back and then at the time when I was on Broadway I think Kanye's um Ultralight Beam and all of that was out and I was replaying Ultralight Beam a lot oh, so that's wow. the, that's the only thing I really remember but like aside from anything other than music musicals, but like it was really just musicals, like things with big bands. And I was listening to a lot of that. And um, I was heavy on Cap Calloway. I mean, I've always been heavy on Cap Calloway, but like Broadway, like just like dampened it for me and then, um, or boosted it for me. And then, um, yeah, I've only, it, was, it was really nothing but musicals. Like I was listening to the Book of Mormon, um waitress was still on broadway i think has waitress left broadway i don't even know i think waitress was on broadway then Haley kilgore was we were on broadway at the same time oh. and i was listening to her a lot i was listening to um what was that show her show a lot and then um i was listening mean girls was on broadway um a waiting for life you know that's not the show though that's that's the one, I think the one Haley was on is like Once on This Island or something. Once like on This Island, yes. I was listening to Once on This Island a lot. Please forgive me, Haley. Um, I was listening to Once on This Island a lot. Um, yeah, I was just listening to musicals, musicals, musicals. Um, anything that had an orchestra. Anything that, that had live music behind it. That's that's crazy because you definitely see that in the EP. You definitely hear. Like the strings and it just sounds so real. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's I mean, you know it's, it's real for me. And I know this next EP, like I, it's 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 just like that, but like a little bit more. And and it's, and it's a it's a different like. I feel like a grown woman in the newer songs. So, so I you know had to pull out the the big boys again and and um you know bring the orchestra back so yeah well let's jump into that i was going to ask a little bit later but you know tell me like what's it sounding like if you could say anything about who you worked with uh, is it going to sound like good soup like in, in the terms of like the style you know just kind of give me a little bit a little bit about it you know so i'll say that it's an array of tempos okay. <laughs> it's an array of tempos i'm working with d mile uh boss stevens Boss Stevens first. Boss Stevens is executive produced um my EP. And um Mike Barney, Timmy, um, Timmy Mason Jr. and uh Harold Lilly, uh all out of heart cover in LA. Mm -hmm. And very blessed. It's a whole bunch of sounds. Sent all my music over all my lyrics and my songs and the stuff that I came up with and sent it over to them and they sent it back and uh we finally finished the EP like a couple days ago. So um, it should be coming out pretty soon, uh, mid-April, I, I, I believe. And um, and yeah, I, it, it's, it's, not, it's not like Good Soup at all. Like Good Soup is there, but it makes sense in the flow. Like an array of tempos meaning that like it, 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 it has different pathways. Um, I wanted to make sure the EP was a, um, a tribute to my, my grandfather, 
and he had to me he lived so many lives he was you know a vietnam veteran he was a war veteran and um and uh he was a grandfather he worked at the post office um he was at you know a heavy he was an usher usher board member um he he's to me he's and he was a great father and grandfather um and he was the epitome of 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 southern a good down to earth man a great person um a great southern man and he taught me southern charm and the ep is actually called southern delicacy so i like to think that i like to say that you know he taught me how to be a southern delicacy in my own way as a woman and um so it's it's a tribute to my grandfather through the the situations that have happened in my life and through music so um it's it, illustrations was was the was the stamp like oh she uses live music but this one i think it's going to be like oh she uses live music so yeah, yeah i'm super there's not a real live instrument said so what there's not a song on this ep on this next ep that doesn't use a live instrument really wow yeah that's i'm well first of all i'm sure your grandfather is very proud of you you know and I, it's awesome to hear that you're dedicating it to him um but second like d miles one of the whole group my whole team we love him so i'm really really excited for that but you know just tell me a little bit about your process production wise like you talked about it i honestly didn't know that you had a hand in it and that makes me even more happy to be a fan so i was going to ask you specific songs but how about you just tell me like you know one that you really had to, like a like a strong hand in i guess and you know just how your process is for making the songs so basically i will go on logic i i will make the song like i'll write the song i'll vocal produce the song i'll i'll put the music behind it uh but it'll be a demo so it'll be like beep beep boop 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 It'll it'll be like it'll be, it'll be <laughs> like I'll I'll and but the thing is I I I have a um a nice way around the piano so it'll be good enough that the producers can take it and then run with it, run with it. I have a very big hand in my music, wow. <laughs> a big hand in my music, and um um it's up to the producers to have an even bigger hand. You know what I mean? Um, but I I definitely start the relay race. That's awesome. But, like even, even my last EP because I did it on Broadway. Like this, and it was a different process while I was on Broadway because I didn't know how to create the the backing music. So I was like beatboxing it, and I was like putting the beat together. The reason why she's got it is is it starts off like bum 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 ba da ba da bum bum ba da bum 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 is because. I, I did the beatboxing for it. Not beatboxing, like I did the music for it and I vocally produced it and I didn't know how to put the music behind it. So it's like, I had to make it with my mouth first and then put the lyrics on it. And then thankfully I just sent it off to them. And it was like, well, we should just keep it. You know what I mean? So that was the only song that <laughs> that we kept where it's like, you could actually tell that I put the, the vocal produce, not the vocal producing, but like I did the beat behind it first, so probably one of the only songs but all of my songs I have a huge hand in um my like can you do it for me I did the the bass line in in the, before um they send it off to a real bass player it, that's usually how it happens like I'll 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 do the the melody for it all they'll send it off to somebody who can actually you know make it real so it I have a big hand in my music and which is why I'm very passionate where when I I need to I I the only thing I asked for is just to put me down as co-producer somewhere. And um, I, it, because, you know, it, it, that my music means that much to me and it's my sound. And um, I just am thankful that I can find people who can cultivate my sound with me. Yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised. I really did not know that. And I'm like super excited and even more happy now. Like really, cause I like I was saying before, like you're so unique to me and so original. And it's hard to find that nowadays, but now it makes sense why you're so original. You're literally doing, like, eighty five percent of the stuff. You know, coming up with not even hundred percent and just having somebody, you know, put the icing on really. So that's a, you know, props to you for that. It's really amazing, and I'm super happy to hear that. Um, yeah. 
you know, tell me, like, out of your discography so far, like, what's one of your favorite songs that you've made then? In order to favorite on your on the, on the EP, I have my favorites. I'll tell you after you yeah. tell me. Or unless you want I guess to it discography, it, it it has to be out if it's if it's that. Um, well, I guess it's coming out. Well, m- one of my favorite songs would be "All Mine," and then "All Mine," and then it's not out yet. But it's a song called Willie's Interlude, and it's um, a tribute to my grandfather. So, it, the Willie's Interlude is not out, but All Mine is my favorite. I'm looking forward to the Willie's Interlude. Then, um, my personal favorite is either When We Jump or I, I love Fall for the production. Like hearing the whole thing, especially the end, is like that's what I mean. Like that's real like music to me. When We Jump is just such a beautiful song. And I, I think it has like the orchestra stuff that you were talking about and just these jazz elements. Um, and then probably another one is like, can you do it for me? And it's just like, again, it's the energy. So this props to you on all these songs, really. Like I really thoroughly enjoy them. I'm, just, I'm, the, I'm a fan, I really I really am. And I'm just so glad we could talk about them and know more about them. Cause it's, it's just crazy to me right now that you actually did all that, really. So thank you. No, no. Of course. And I would none of the music would would have been possible without the producers though. So it's like I I I do start it, but they finish it. No, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure they appreciate you appreciating that. Um, but let's hop into this one song, which I feel like people are gonna overlook, and it's I I, think, I hope I'm saying his name right, but it's One K Few, right? Yeah. It's, it's not safe. I love gospel too, like really, one man of God. Um, so just tell me about that song. I feel like people are gonna overlook it, and I just kind of want to know like how that came together, you know? Um, that's another Sony session that they put together, and um, I'm also a woman of God, so I, it was okay. It was like, oh yeah, let's 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 write a let's write a verse for one K few. It wasn't, um. And then, like the, I, I helped vocal produce it as well. It was a really fun session. I do remember it. Uh, I, I remember it being, being very like, fun. Like, he's very down to earth. He's definitely from Georgia, and um, it, but he's also like a man of God. So it's like, it's fun to see the the the. It's fun to see the 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 human the human aspect of like or like just the the regular aspect that you don't have to be like dressed up in no suit or like you ain't gotta you can come as you are you know what I mean like and he embodies that a lot and I don't really have much for that song I just know that it was a great song and then we did a music video for it very fun no it was very cold <laughs> very cold that day but um. But yeah, I mean, I always want to do music with him. Um, uh, Flex is one of our really good friends. Uh, Flex is his manager, and um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have much. It it was it was writing for people is the the difference between writing for myself and writing for other people is that I'm the employee. So it's like, so it's like I just gotta I have to be quick with it. So it's like I never really get the time to like. Um, indulge in it like I mean I, I indulged in the Ari session but like I still didn't I still took like 30 minutes to get it done it was like it, which is which is pretty short so it's like as long as I gotta get in I gotta get out like and then that's my job and I leave so it was a pretty fun session for the time that I was there <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay cool um I only got one more question and we're gonna hop into this ending segment that we it's like we do a uh, rapid questions basically Okay. Only last question for you is if there's any more plans for 2023, any any goals, anything you want to accomplish, you know, let us know. Um, I stay with my mom, so my goal is to get my own apartment. Um, which I'm I I'm thinking that it could happen pretty soon. Uh, but my mom has always been the lady to be like, I, I mean, stay until you need to, mm-hmm. and I'm poor, so it's like, why not? Um, life is expensive right now and it don't matter what kind of job you got right now. <laughs> That's facts. 
the ability to stay with your parents stay with your parents um what else um yeah i i want i want the music that i put out to be received really well that's another that's another hope pray manifestation the wish and goal um i think i want to hit at least 80k on followers you know got to got to also still be productive um i want to hit more than that but like i'm starting low you know low expectations always work um and then um yeah i just want to be i don't want to have fun this summer <laughs> We've been working since January. Mm. I want to get lit. <laughs> yeah, you deserve you know, it. But I want to, I want to get lit. Uh, yeah. That's basically my goals for 2023. And to keep working. Like, the work is going to happen. Like, we've already got a whole bunch of stuff lined up. I'm about to release an EP in, like, two weeks. Is the, I, I, the reason why I, I strayed away from, like, work stuff is because, like, the work is obviously going to happen. Um, it's just rarely I, we get the chance to enjoy the time that we have outside of work so it's like mm. I would I, those are also my goals like the goal my work goals we, we've been accomplishing them and we've been checking them off the list but like it's it's very imperative to keep reminding yourself to have fun while working at the same time so I want to get lit I want to get my apartment I want to be surrounded by my family. Those are also goals. And um, I just want to make sure that I I have, I, I want to have too much fun this summer. 24, I'm about to turn 25. Like, that's a goal to 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 look back and be like, I had fun. Mm. I really appreciate the human in you, if that makes sense. Just, it's nice to hear that, you know, these, these normal adult, like, like I said, 24, these goals, same, similar goals, you know, so I appreciate is hearing that and I hope that you accomplish them all. I really do. And like you said, manifest them, you know? Thank you. So rapid questions. My favorite personal segment, because I always love the answers. They're nothing <laughs> they're nothing too out of here, but I always love them. So let's hop into them. Uh favorite song right now. Smoke by Victoria Monet and Lucky Day. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Favorite Maybe not favorite album. The album that you would play for 24 hours if you had, like, one. For 24 hours? Yeah, it's the only song, only album you can listen to. Elton John, Yellow Brick Road. Ooh, that's not what I was expecting at all. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> dream collab with a producer. They're a little Damn. hard. Robert Glasper. Wow. I love it. I'm loving these answers. I'm loving them. Uh, old school artists you'd want to collab with. They, they got to be alive. No, no, I don't have to. Okay, Nina Simone. Okay. Awesome. Uh, new school. Victoria Monet. <laughs> Victoria Monet. But uh, is Victoria new? Nah, not really. I mean, but like, she like mid, I guess. Oh, like the in the between. She's been around for a minute. Okay. Yeah. I, I, well, then let me change my answer. I mean, it's always gonna be Victoria Monet, but um, flow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's new, new. Yeah, I love them. I really do. I can't wait yeah, to. We're gonna try and see them live, the team. So Oof. they're killing it. They're killing it. Um, they someone, someone you want to write for? Flo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would yo to go back to your pen real quick. You have, um, like all right. So when I found out that you wrote stuff for Ari, and then listening back, because again, I I listened to your stuff in the beginning, like what illustrations. Then to put the two together, you had the, like this. I don't know. I don't want to say unique, but like, I noticed your pen basically. If that makes sense, like you have this style. So that's a compliment. Trying, like I just I love it, and I just think 
a song with flow with your style would be something like completely no one's ever heard before. So hopefully you can manifest that and get that to happen. Um, I know. That'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a song you wish you wrote. Mm. I wish I wrote Donny Hathaway's Jealous Guy. Wow. Another awesome pick. That's a great song. Crazy oh, song. Because I, I have lived the story. One, two. So, yes. I wish I wrote that song. I wish I was back in that time. Wait, do I wish I was back in that time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's the 70s. <laughs> you know, if it was the 60s, that'd be but yeah, yeah. Uh, he's cutting it close, but <laughs> um, an album you wish you were featured on. Mm. From any era, you know, any artist. That's a that's a great question. Everybody has that pause when I ask them that, so. <laughs> Dang, I would eat on. Mm. <laughs> if you want to think about it, we can come back to it. I got like two more. You got two more? Okay. Let's... We'll come back to that one. Um, <laughs> Your favorite song to perform. It doesn't have to be yours, but you know, it could be yours. It could be somebody else's. My favorite song to perform is When We Jump. It's crazy because I did not even want that song on my set. But now yeah. it's my favorite to perform. That's the no, I'm surprised you wouldn't want to perform that. To me, that's like a performance song. Like it's it just, is performance. It. It's hard. It's like it's emotionally taxing. So <laughs> like like vocally, yeah, but it's it's so emotionally taxing to continue to like have to relive the story for myself mm. over and over and over and over and over and over. But then when you get to it, it's like, ah, you know, other people might really need to hear the song. So then you just get over it. Well, I just got over it. So, well, like you said in the beginning, like, you know, when you're performing live, like that's touches people. Yeah. yeah. I, that's my favorite song for sure. One of. Um, Thank you. So. Again, I wish I could have saw it live. I think I would have just fell to the floor, probably. That's probably why I, I, that, that didn't happen, because they would have had to drag me out of there or something. <laughs> Ambulance would have had to come. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> your favorite Ari Lennox song? My favorite Ari Lennox song. Uh oh. My favorite Ari Lennox song is Buss It. Okay. That's my song right there. Awesome. I mean, I mean, of course, like we could be cliche and say the ones that I wrote. Pressure, if if we talk about the ones that I wrote, I love pressure. Um, yeah, I love pressure. Just the just the 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 sample that's in it. Oh, I love it. But I love bust it. <laughs> um, I was hoping that you would actually say one that wasn't yours. The pressure is just that song. Like I'm gonna shout out my my uh, teammate Kyle. Like he loves that song. And when he found out that you wrote it, he was, like, mind-blown. Really? Yeah, because he thinks it's one of the best songs that's come out in, like, a long time. You know, so props to you for writing that. Um, Thank you. Last question. We'll go back to it. Album you wish you, fe you were featured on. Okay. Album that I wish I was featured on. Um... I think I would. <laughs> Dang. I mean, um, if you want, maybe next, like, look, we'll do, we'll do it this way. If we speak again next time, I need that answer. I will have that answer for you the I'm, next time. I'm going to let you think about it. I'm going to let you think about it. It's um, hard to be like, I'd eat on someone else's work. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, hard. To, it's hard to say that, but. I mean, I guess it would be in a term in terms of endearment. So it's like, I yeah. would, oh, yeah, I would love to have been on um, on uh, Victoria Monet's Jaguar. 
I would have loved to have been on that. Like, even as like BGVs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I don't. That. I can definitely see that actually. But I have an I have another answer for you, because I have I have at least two answers for you. All right, all right. We'll, we'll dig into it next time. But yo, Jalen, for real, like, I'm just so super excited for what you're gonna do. I'm really glad we get to talk and. You know, I always say to every artist, I'm excited for the career, and I'm, I am, but like, t like, I don't know. There's something about you that I really feel like is gonna be amazing. So, thank I you. Can't wait to see the, the future that you do, the stuff that you make, the EP that's coming. I can't wait. Didn't think it was gonna be two weeks away, thank basically. You. So that's amazing. Um, and yeah, <laughs> just, you know, good luck on everything. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us for real. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for speaking to me. No, no.